So uh, we are, while well, we are located in Barcelona and, and we are important in, in Spain as the Children's Hospital in Spain, we also have a great relevance uh, if we compare to the other European Children's Hospital. We are the third one in children's suited per year, just behind Necker Hospital and Babino Yesu in Paris and Rome. And we actually have uh, a global relevance in the hospital and a global view of our view, of our work. First of, first of all, because the hospital order we belong to has a shared purpose, which is to care in a comprehensive way for those living in a vulnerable situation, helping to contribute to a more equitable society. And also because of the networks we are in, which is the both national and international networks as the ERNs and alliances. So uh, we actually do lead some specialities in the health ecosystem, and we're going to focus today in two of them, which are neuroscience and rare diseases. And we're going to focus on this uh, is because in these two specialities, we have to try, we, we advance the knowledge on the clinical practice on these areas through three platforms. One of them is the clinical practice, the standard clinical practice, which is leading in, in our ecosystem. The other one is through applied research. And the last one is through innovation and entrepreneurship. And what we actually have done or have managed to do here is to bring all these three together to potentiate, to make that the sum of those three parts do, do, do uh, produce something bigger than they, they three alone. And for that, I'm going to speak in the first person here, if you allow me, through our little project, which is called Neuroprotect. And it's a little uh, startup that has been born from the uh, Hospitalio de Deu that I actually founded, co-founded and, and lead. And what we are doing is powering the pediatric brain development. Uh, this startup, this uh, Neuroprotect, uh, born, is, is born from a, a fact that is a 15% of pediatric population is affected by a neurodevelopmental disease. This is a lot. This is a lot of children do have a neurodevelopmental disease. And for almost none of them, I'm sorry because the presentation is quite messed up um, because of the format here, but most of them have no therapeutic alternatives. This is, we have a lot of kids with a neurodevelopmental disease that severely affects their life and the caregivers' lives, and none of them, or almost none of them, have therapeutic alternative. What we do now, though, is that there at the developing brain, there are some metabolic pathways and some biological processes happening that we can modulate. So what we have been doing at Neuroprotector in our years of experience on brain metabolism is identify some of these key pathways happening and some of these key processes and then how to modulate them. So based on that, we define Neuroprotect, which is a formula, a formulation made for over 20 nutraceutical compounds that supposes an advanced nutrition for the developing brain. It is key that the thing Neuroprotect is doing is facilitate neurodevelopment, not targeting a specific disease, but facilitate neurodevelopment as a whole. And therefore, it has a wide range of therapeutic use. We are not only treating one disease, but the whole developing brain. We have proved the clinical efficiency in more than 10 pathologies already, and it is compatible with other treatments, which is key because you cannot, uh, you don't have to retire, for example, an anti-epileptic for a neurodevelopmental disease. Uh, and what we are trying to produce here is the first choice for suspected neurodevelopmental disorder. This is when you have a kid in your clinical office with a neurodevelopmental disorder, you can give already in Reprotect while you end up diagnosis on treating the disease. So um, there are three key aspects in this development of this startup, which is one of them is that we are talking about nutraceutical compounds. Nutraceutical compounds are also known as food supplements, and they actually do uh, fall under the food supplement market. So the regulation and all the manufacturing processes are quite different than when you are talking about drugs. This is simpler and cheaper processes, which has allowed us to go quicker. And we have a broad safety margins for unknown long-term effect. The other one is that we are reinforcing key metabolic pathways to facilitate our development. This is, we are not treating a single disease, but affecting the whole brain maturation, which is going to let us treat a lot of diseases as we are proving already. And the last one is that we have a tested clinical efficacy. A big problem, a big issue with food supplements sometimes is that uh, there are some doctors in the NIA that do not accept them because sometimes the clinical test for, to prove their efficacy has not been well done. You do not know if that works or you're just giving something which is doing no, no effect at all. We have tested, we have preclinical and clinical evidence in more than 10 different neurodevelopmental disorders. So what we are doing with Neuroprotect is to protect and help the developing brain. We are giving a first therapeutic alternative when there is no therapy, as Alphonse was saying, we have identified the need before the product is like, we have no treatment for these diseases. We are providing a treatment where there was no treatment or no hope. So I'm not going to go through all the uh, clinical efficacy tests because this is not the point of today, but we have tested that in several diseases. 
both genetic and congenital rare and frequent disorders. For example, you have testes in red syndrome and phylum academic, which are really, really severe um, inherited neurodevelopmental disorders, but also in neurodevelopmental delay due to preterm birth. As you probably know, preterm birth, now preterm birth is a growing aspect in the society. And many of these preterm babies do have a neurodevelopmental delay. We are being able to make these preterm babies survive, but then we do have nothing to offer them, so they don't have a delay. And we are trying to treat this part, and we are actually achieving to do that part. We have done these trials in nine to 10, 12 months, which is a pretty solid clinical trial, and both in N of one trials and double blind placebo controlled uh, trials. And well, this is just the design of the trial, which is not important today, but it's like quite um, certified through the ethic committee and with no environmental scales, EEG, et cetera. So um, what we have managed here is in the results to get an improvement in all the areas of neurodevelopmental enough disorders. We have an easy and safe administration product. This is just like a milkshake the kid has to take every morning and every evening, which uh, actually tastes pretty good. Uh, and we have the, the improvement was detected not only by eyes, but also by the patient environment. For example, one of the caregivers, a mother of one of the kids was saying, well, my kid has gone from be saying absolutely nothing and just having uh, a, a tremor to be able to say mother and no. And for me that my kid has can say now no has been a huge difference in the communication with the kid. For me, my kid is back to me, which is, is great. It has a big social and economic impact, both on families and on the national health system. How, how have you done this? Because the, 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 part, the key part today is that this project has been born uh, in a really, really short term. A few years ago, we identified a team, the, the, the need. It is true that we came from a background on brain metabolism uh, has been built for a lot, a lot of years, I mean, many years. Uh, but then when we had the idea and the final list of products to develop the, the formula, we tested in animals pretty quickly, and then we managed to do the clinical trial pretty quickly as well. And we managed to find the funding to do all these projects in, in like six months or something like that. So we have been able to go really fast on that. This project, the Alma Mater is Alfredo Señan de Deu. It was born here. It was actually the main inventor is Dr. Ainz García Cazorla, who is a child neurologist and a key opinion leader in the, in the sector. And me, myself, who I'm, I'm taking also the lead for the project. And we had three investors who came from the uh, pharmaceutical companies and the pharmaceutical area, or parapharmacy area. What are we now in this project? Well, we are in a go-to-market readiness level. Uh, we are going to uh, propose this as a medical doctor guided e-commerce. For that, we want to start in the very first months in Catalina Hospital, because it's our, our area of, of more uh, impact, but move quickly to the rest of Spain and access in a second phase to the international market. So um, as, a, as this is the example, and I have talking about this example, because this example of how in a really short period of time, actually merging the three aspects, applied research, clinical practice, and entrepreneurial and innovation, have managed to have in less than two years, a product ready to go to the market, and already have over 40 children treated with these that are still on the treatment. Um, so based on that, well, how, how have we done that? We have been powered, we have been um, and under the, the protection and the foster of i for kids which is a pediatric innovation hub and they have helped us in for example some stuff as business plan testing the intellectual property management uh, networking with other ecosystems so uh having having the, the having our backs taken by a hub has been really helpful to to do this project so based on that on our experience uh what do we think or what do we expect from a neuro hub I think, as Alphonse was saying, we are. I think this is defined both by right, what do we expect and not to expect, probably. On the one to expect, uh, I, I will expect neuroscience networking and joint activities promotion. For example, uh, I was talking right now before about the analysis of an EEG uh, platform, which we have to analyze for this project. So maybe being in a hub, this would have been just uh, maybe quicker. Uh, scientific and technical resources specific for neuroscience. Sometimes uh, when you are in non-so specific hubs, you don't know who can do something and being in the hub can facilitate this specific thing. Uh, technical expertise in specific neuroscience matters, for example, in intellectual property, we found ourselves that one part, uh, we are already under patent evaluation for this uh, product. And one of the issues that uh, the patent evaluation uh, raised was that this was already known in some part of neuro uh, 
neural degeneration, and we needed someone with knowledge in intellectual property to defend that neural development is different from neural, neural degeneration. So maybe this kind of expertise can be helpful. The capability to adopt the entrepreneurial timing, this is key, at least I think in my opinion, like sometimes when you talk to corporations or to universities or hospitals, the timing is staggeringly slow. It, it's just really slow. It's everything has to go through 80 steps and have to be escalated to someone. And this is incompatible with entrepreneurial. I mean, you, you need a response quick and you need to respond in the market. And the, uh, the, the acquisition to have your technology tested and cover each institution gaps. Maybe we as a hospital, you have a gap in the developing of technology, but maybe the other one, the university or another member, needs the hospital to other one to, to test their to the to test the technology. So maybe being able to test on to to cover everyone gaps for me is the, the key of, of a of a hub. What not to expect? Well on one hand I will not expect to have duplicity with other existing hubs. For example in our case uh, we have already had some support from i4 kids. Um, I will find no interest in being another hub if it's going to be already quite the same or it has come to some duplicity. If we already have a hub for pediatric innovation, let's focus what they are not doing. Let's focus something that we can do that they are not covering already and vice versa. Uh, as Alphonse said, please do not have increased bureaucracy because it burdens all the innovation. It burdens any process at all, but innovation process especially or the research process is completely burdened by, by uh, bureaucracy that completely kills the, the idea. And uh, having several points of contact and a poor account managing, I think a hub has to give you a service and you actually are giving something to the hub back. But we need this to be fast. You need to have one person, one account manager maybe, or one only window and saying, hey, I, have, I need this and then, okay, contact this, this and this and do that quickly. And then you having to, to find your way. So at the end, what we expect from a neural hub is to be more than the sum of the parts that is composed by, that compose the neural hub is at the end to make each part be more than itself by being part of the hub. Thank you very much. Any questions? company or not? Yeah, in, a, in an almost representative part, they have been quite generous in that aspect. Uh, they have a small percentage of the of the company. We also wanted to have them in the company uh, because, well, it gives you, it has been part of the, in the project and it also gives you some sub oil as the, as the, on, the, on the brand, even, even the brand. So yes, they are part of the company in a small percentage, so not everyone was eluded. Um, I, I fully agree on that. Uh, um, I like your answer because I believe this is this is the way that we can involve hospital and research and innovation institutes participating in the companies. I mean, this should be a small percentage to make them agile, but I believe this is the, also the way for the people here to solve the incompatibilities uh, of the researchers that you probably want them to work in San Juan de Deo providing knowledge to your company. Not working in your company, but you know what I mean, yeah, no, in absolutely. this type of collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, very nice presentation. I was wondering which stage of the, the kids when you administer your product. So, the, 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 which stage? The age of oh, uh, the children. We have to read it from oh, the lowest we have gone is two years old because nutraceuticals regulation do not cover before two years old. Uh, and we have gone up to 21. We have one one kid or one young man with 21. The others are 18, I'd say. Most of them are eight, between 2 and 18. We apparently see that the youngest kids are respond better than the, than the oldest one. Also because with this combination this formula is doing is protecting the developing brain, uh, protecting from the damage that is happening. And the later you treat, the more damage has already been. But it will have seen some pretty good effects or, or rather good effects on on all their kids as well. You have to take in mind though that these are really, really severe diseases. <laughs>